welcome back to my channel my name is Daisy and today I'm going to be talking about my experience of going through COVID on a cruise ship So I recently returned from a year-long contract with Royal Caribbean performing Hairspray on the world's largest cruise ship in the world, the Symphony of the Seas. It was supposed to finish on the 2nd of May 2020. Before Covid hit the ship, we kind of all had this speculation of something was going to happen sometime soon. We didn't have that long left so we were all kind of confused and it all felt very up in the air because we didn't know whether we would be extended and had to stay on the ship for a bit longer or we didn't know whether we'd just be sent home as soon as possible because airports were starting to shut, cruises were starting to get cancelled and the cruises on Symphony are seven night cruises. It was the cruise from the 7th of March to the 14th of March and that week the ship was generally quite quiet because a lot of people felt quite scared I think to come on the ship which to be honest if you've ever been on a cruise ship you know that they are the cleanest places that you could possibly go on holiday. The ship was quite empty which was really nice for crew because it meant that we could go in guest areas and it wouldn't be too overcrowded. So on the last day of the cruise it was the Friday because the cruises start on Saturday. We were in Coco Cay which is Royal's private island. We were all just kind of you know having a relaxing day. I was spending the day with my boyfriend in the jacuzzis on the top deck and a couple of hours later I think if I remember rightly everything feels like a blur because so much happened and there was so much confusion and so much talk and rumours that everything all just mingles into one. I can remember being called into the theatre with the rest of the cast. Our production manager sat down and said we've got some bad news. When we go into Miami tomorrow we'll be dropping off the passengers and then no more passengers will be getting on for the next 30 days. So we all kind of thought, okay, this could actually be quite fun because it's just 30 days, it will be kind of like a charter cruise, which in the cruise industry is when a company hires the ship out, you don't have to do much work and we thought it would kind of be like a bit of a holiday. So at this point we only had a month left of hairspray shows, but we'd finished our shows of hairspray for that week, so we were all kind of thinking, what if we don't get to do hairspray again? And it turned out that we had performed our last hairspray. So that evening we were supposed to have our last show of flight, which is the other production show that we perform on board. And then we had the realization that what if the new cast don't come on board? Because you do a big full cast handover, which is really rare in this industry that you get to do a full cast replacement. So that was the 13th of March that we found out that news. The following cruise, we went into Miami, dropped off the passengers, and we weren't actually allowed to get off in Miami. There was speculation that we'd just be floating around for the next 30 days, either the Bahamas or just being docked in Miami. It was all up in the air. We didn't know much about the virus then, and we didn't know whether it was on our ship. Nobody had symptoms in our cast. We didn't think that it was that serious at the time because it was right at the beginning, back in March. After the first day we couldn't get off in Miami, it started to become like crew parties all the time. And on the 16th of March, which was the Monday, they actually took us into Coco Cay, the private island, and we had a full crew day where we could just use all the facilities, the water park, the zip line, which was lovely. So we all started arranging activities and stuff that we could do together because we realized that we might not have much longer together. We also did a games night, had a crew ice skating session that the ice cast arranged for us. We were able to use the rock climbing walls, all the crew bars were open. It was all well and good for a week. And then we had a meeting and they basically said that all of the casts need to leave because we're not going to be doing our job anytime soon. We were all devastated and we all had that realisation that we were so lucky to have what we had. So on the 20th of March, we arranged to do a final hairspray show for the crew because we didn't realize that the last show we did of hairspray for the guests was going to be our last show. It was very emotional. It was so amazing though. The, they were so supportive and it was such a special send off, even though it's not the way we thought it would be. People started getting flights show up in their My Royal Caribbean profile. Some people didn't get there till really last minute. So we didn't really know if some people were going or some people were staying. The 23rd, we got told that if you really want to stay and 
not get paid, then you could stay. If you have someone at home that is at high risk, then you are able to stay. Because my boyfriend was in a different department, he was going to be staying on the ship and we didn't know for how long at the time. But he was staying on, so one of the reasons I wanted to stay was so that I could stay with him because I didn't know when we would next see each other again. And also at the time my dad was ill so I didn't want to put him at risk by possibly picking something up in the airport before I came home. The 24th in the evening, everything was kind of getting finalised. I had my bags packed, everything was all ready to go. I put my bags on the trolley that were going to be taken off the ship the next day. I had a flight show up that evening on the 24th even though I'd requested to stay. It showed up in my app that I was flying from Miami to London Heathrow with a few other people in the cast. At this point, I still thought that I was going home and it still felt very real and I'd said my goodbyes to my boyfriend and all of the cast and my bags were gone. Seven people from my cast decided to stay. For personal reasons as well, some people didn't feel safe flying and some people had people at risk. When we requested to stay, they said that you could stay for a further week and that was it. Like, you can't stay any longer than a further week and I was like, if I get a further week then that's fine. There could be a possibility that there might not be any flights on the 1st, so I might go on the 8th of April. I thought I was going to be going home on the 1st of April because my boyfriend is French. His gateway was Paris, so we had to try and see if we could possibly get flown back together because the plan was that we were both going to come back and stay here in England together. After that week, when most of the cast signed off, it kind of started to change. On the 24th of March, Royal made an announcement saying that they would return to service on May the 12th and July 1st for sailings from Alaska, Canada and New England. Everything started to kind of chill out and I realised it's probably a good thing that I'm coming home on the 1st of April because it doesn't feel like a holiday anymore. It didn't feel fun anymore because there was that risk that like what if someone has symptoms because that's when we were starting to find out more about the virus. It can take 14 days for you to start showing symptoms. A couple of days later on the 27th of March we found out that one of our housekeeping actually got symptoms of the virus so they told us that we are going to be going into a lockdown on the ship and everybody is going to be placed into guest cabins and we are going to be in there by ourselves for two weeks. Now this meant that we had to pack everything up from the cabins that we were already in. It meant that my boyfriend and I weren't able to stay in the same cabin because there could have been a chance that one of us had it. And also we weren't a registered couple so we're not married so we weren't able to stay together. We've obviously been together for a long time, it wasn't like we just met each other on the ship and it was difficult. Obviously we were very upset about it but we completely understood why and also we've been on and off of long distance relationship for the past three years anyway so we knew we could do it and it was only two weeks so it was fine. So then on the 29th of March in the morning we started moving into the guest cabins. We didn't know where we'd be, we just all knew that we would be getting a balcony. Fortunately I got an ocean view balcony but not only was it just a lovely cabin, it was actually a suite and it was massive and I had loads of space for myself. I was very, very grateful for that. My boyfriend didn't get so lucky. They only have a certain amount of each cabin. He ended up staying in a Central Park view balcony which is facing in to the ship. Could be worse, I know, but he didn't get as much sun and I was able to sunbathe on the balcony pretty much every day. We were in there for two weeks and we were getting three meals a day we were getting two litres of water delivered a day, we were getting one can of soda delivered. You could order essentials if, like, if you needed them, you could order toothpaste, shampoo, conditioner, but we weren't allowed to leave the cabin at all. But I think it was only US citizens that were allowed to get off on the 1st of April, so they only did like three days of cabin isolation, I think. After that, no one could really get off for a long time. It was a long time before we were actually allowed to start repatriating people and sending people home because the CDC and the US Coast Guard weren't allowing people from cruise ships to get off the ship. It feels like a blur. The whole thing feels like I just clicked my fingers and it was all a dream. I can't believe I actually went through that. But anyway, the crew member that had the symptoms was the only confirmed case that we had on our ship and unfortunately he did pass away in hospital. We did have no further confirmed cases on the ship. We did have someone with symptoms, which meant that we had to be extended in our cabin isolation for a further 
week and a half, I think it was, on that day that we were first able to come out, I think it was the 24th of April. So we'd been in from the 29th of March to the 24th of April. After that, we were allowed to come out at certain hours and because this ship is so big, it's the largest cruise ship in the world. There's so many crew members on there. There was over 2,000 crew members still on this ship. They allowed port side and starboard side, which if you don't know is left and right side, to come out at different hours. So I was on the port side and my boyfriend was on the starboard side. So even when we were able to come out, we weren't allowed to come out at the same time. Okay guys, this is a very pivotal moment. I'm about to step out of my door. It's 9 a.m. and we're allowed to go out. But luckily, when I came out on my morning hours, I would go to Central Park, which is where his cabin was, and go and see him from the balcony. But if he was on an ocean view as well as me, I wouldn't have been able to see him for that first few days. On the 25th of April, we were told that we were gonna be able to move in together. So we were really, really excited because we hadn't been together for so long because it was difficult. Like, we'd, we'd been through so much, but it's torture, like being on the same ship not being able to be in the same cabin together. It was just ridiculous. Royal Caribbean did an absolutely amazing job of looking after us while we were in that cabin. We were getting all these free movies, we were getting free Wi-Fi the entire time because usually crew members have to pay for their Wi-Fi. We were getting temperature checks twice daily as well. When we were allowed to move in together, he moved in with me because obviously I had a bigger room and I had an ocean view. On the 26th of April, we were allowed to visit the slot chest for the first time, which is basically a little shop that you can buy all your favorite snacks and treats. And on the very first day that we went, because it was open a lot over the period of time that we were there, but the very first day that we went, the queue, because you had like a designated hour, so we were on deck. 11 and deck 11 port side and deck 11 starboard side had different hours it took an hour and 15 minutes for us to get into the shop and then when you get to the shop you're only allowed four items each to allow for everyone to be able to get some snacks for their first visit i got some cheetos and i think i got some milka so then we kept getting false hope of when we would be leaving because at first we thought well there's no way that we're going to be able to go on a commercial flight and then that's when they started to arrange charter flights, but then the charter flights kept getting canceled because the CDC weren't approving them. So we would go into Miami every Wednesday and drop off people or pick up supplies. Once you were able to leave your cabins, the bars were open and you were able to order four ciders or four beers a day. So there was this program that the cruise director put on every day and it was called the Symphony Update and he would do like a trivia and he would give away free bottles of wine that kept people going as well because it was like your daily entertainment and something to look forward to and also a chance of winning free wine or free chocolate or something once we were able to come out the temperature checks started to move into certain areas around the ship and we would have a meeting time rather than them coming to our cabin it, it became more relaxed but still we had to socially distance we had to always wear a mask when we were walking around the ship there were soda machines that we were able to get soda from the snack shop had certain hours and you weren't able to go whenever you wanted only at the very very end i think you were able to go because they didn't have much left it kind of just became normality. Matt and I, when we moved into a cabin together, we kind of had a schedule. Every day we get an announcement at 7 a.m., 12 p.m. and 6 p.m. announcing that breakfast, lunch and dinner are being brought around the corridors so that we know to listen out for a knock on the door. Because when you get your food, you're not allowed to take it from the person. We had a table outside our cabin that the food and cutlery and drinks were put on and you take it off the table and then take it into your room. We had a survey come through every few days and we would fill out what options we want for our food. There'd be like a meat option, a fish option and a vegetarian option. The breakfast was just a continental breakfast plate. Every meal you'd get a main dish, a dessert and a side. But honestly being woke up at 7am every morning meant that you had so many hours in the day that you're just awake because sometimes I just couldn't fall back to sleep because it was either so hot or the sun was blaring through my balcony. We kind of decided to get up early, go for a walk because the gym was closed. The jogging track was open but you weren't allowed to run on it, you just had to walk. Or we'd go for a coffee or we'd go for a drink in the evening when the bar opened. 
and we just tried to find ways to keep ourselves busy. People would host quizzes on the top deck, 